Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week, um, what I'd like to share with you was all to do with my yoga practice, actually. I, but it isn't just about yoga. For those of you who aren't interested in yoga, there's 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 a lesson to learn within the yoga. <laughs> So I've just recently gone up a level on my yoga app that I've been using and I noticed that I no longer got up in the morning and was excited about doing my yoga. In fact, I dreaded <laughs> doing my yoga. <laughs> the challenge level had gone up so much that it was I was struggling with some of the poses quite considerably to the point where they were causing me <laughs> not pain as in, you know, I was doing something wrong, but my muscles were definitely being tested um, to grow and to strengthen and I was finding that quite a serious challenge and this is really what I want to share with you is that challenge helps us to grow we need challenge in our life but the subconscious the way that it works is it wants to keep us where we've always been and the reason it wants to do that is because it knows that we're safe the way we've always been we will survive we can get we can get by. And by stepping out of that and by doing something different that challenges us, the subconscious has no data. It has no historical memory that you'll be okay if you push yourself further than you've pushed yourself before. So you might find yourself thinking things like, I can't do this. Um, I know that loads of people can, but it's just, I, I can't. I'm physiologically not capable, and I am obviously referring to the yoga, but you can change the wording and apply it to anything. Um, I'm too tired, maybe I'll do it tomorrow, it won't matter if I don't do it today. And if you listen to all of those thoughts, do you know what happens? What happens is you slowly but surely give up on what you've set yourself to do. You slowly but surely erode your belief in yourself and you slowly but surely stay where you've always been. So your thoughts are triggered by the challenge to keep you where you've always been. They create emotions of feeling not good enough, feeling resistance, feeling defeated. And all of those things are there to ensure that you don't do something that your subconscious doesn't know how to protect you from. But the problem with that is that you don't grow. You don't, your, your belief in yourself starts to dwindle. Your life becomes smaller and less joyful and full of things. And as I've noticed as I've got older, <laughs> and at times I've listened to my subconscious voice, I feel older and I feel like I can't do as much as I have done in the past. But I'm determined that that is not going to happen. And I've created this video just so that you can see in your own life how this plays out. And to share with you, you don't have to listen to that voice. That voice is just a murmuring of your subconscious and when you see it for what it is, it loses its power because you can still keep trying. And the other thing that I wanted to share as well is that our subconscious voice in regards to what I'm talking about is louder the greater the challenge you put on yourself. So sometimes when you've challenged yourself to something, um, and it could be work related or love life related or health or, or anything, or even along on the spiritual journey, but the more you challenge yourself, the louder the voice becomes. So sometimes if that voice is so loud that you really just don't think you can do it anymore, maybe instead of giving up completely, you just need to dial the challenge down a bit. So um, earlier on in this week, after I'd been listening to my voice and I was struggling with my yoga practice, uh, instead of giving up on my yoga, I decided to have a day and do restorative yoga instead. So I still stuck to the time, that the length of time that I wanted to do. I still stuck to the level of yoga I wanted to do, but I did restorative yoga, which for those that don't understand yoga, meant that I wasn't doing any standing poses. It was a lot calmer and a lot less um, intensive. But I still stuck to what I'd committed to do. And the importance of that is the more that you do what you say you're going to do, the more your subconscious gets reprogrammed into believing that you're somebody who does what they say they're going to do. 
but at the same time, be aware of the challenge that you've set yourself and see if there's a way, if you feel like you're going to break your word, see if there's a way to dial down the challenge so that you can keep your word and still keep going. And the other thing that I wanted to say as well is not to compare yourself to others because we're all so completely different. Just because so-and-so is running ultramarathons doesn't mean that you need to be running ultramarathons. Start with where you are. In the last four years, actually, since I moved to the UK, um, we've had an incredibly stressful time. <laughs> Things did not go according to plan when I moved to the UK. Um, and it's all great and wonderful now, so, so that's fine. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is we ended up moving houses four times in three years. And I'm a single mum with two kids, so it was very, very stressful. And my health suffered. And what I noticed at the beginning of last year was that when I exercised, I became very breathless. And at first I just thought I had a cold, so I left it. And then I did get a cold. And as the time went past, I became less and less fit. And I felt so frustrated with myself because I've always been a very fit person. And I felt, as I said earlier, I felt old, I felt unfit, I felt heavy, and the more I tried to make myself do what I used to be able to do, the less I was able to do it. And eventually what I realised what I had was not a cold or a virus or anything else, it was um, exercise-induced asthma, which comes from stress. And first of all, when I realised this, I just thought, okay, well, that's it, I just can't do anything anymore. But as I've gone along, and I'm not a doctor, so if you have stress, <laughs> exercise induced asthma, please don't take my, my suggestions um, as this is what you should do. Please go and seek medical advice before you do anything. But I decided that what I was going to do was just take things really, really slowly. So first of all, I just started doing lots of walks and walking up hills, but not too strenuously. And I just increased it slowly and slowly and slowly. And because of the exercise-induced asthma, what happens is, if I get to a stage where I've pushed myself so hard that I become asthmatic, I then have to wait, like, hours until I become fully recovered. So I've had to time myself so sensitively that I have, like, a balancing point. So I push myself hard enough so that I'm increasing my endurance and my, my fitness, but not so hard that I become asthmatic. Um, and it's been a massive learning curve because I really have to tune into myself. I have to honour myself. I have to look after myself, which I may say we have never done in the past. Um, and I've also become very aware of how much I challenge myself. And I think that's what I'm trying to say is you are unique. Listen to yourself. Don't judge yourself on other people. Listen to your body, your fitness, your health and and be happy with the stretch and the challenge you put on yourself. I've really enjoyed sharing this with you. And if you've enjoyed the time with me, if you've learned anything and you feel anyone else would benefit, please share, please like and subscribe because it helps me reach more people. Um, I've got loads of resources on my website, um, as well as a free course, which is Five Steps Towards Self-Awareness. And I'll put links in the notes below to everything, but the website is www.britannia.com and that is B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. So much love from me to you and hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Lots of love. Bye-bye.